let's begin. Okay, hey guys, my name is Kat. So first I want to start off with a question, and you don't have to answer this question if you don't feel comfortable answering it, but just out of curiosity, how many of you guys will admit to texting and driving? <laughs> okay, but I don't blame you guys just because I used to do it too. Right up until um, this December, I went home um, for Christmas break, and um, this topic makes me, this speech that I'm about to give you guys is very passionate because of this story, so it's always a background story. So two days before Christmas, I went to fill in to work for my mom, and as I was leaving work around 5 o'clock, um, this man was going above the speed limit, and he was distracted because he was texting and driving. And he hit me on the side of my car and completely destroyed the front bumper of my car. And if it wasn't God, he would have slammed right into my driver's side door. And this was all because for one split second, he was distracted because he was texting and driving. So today, I'd like to present you guys with why we shouldn't text and drive. So, um, the results when I was doing this research really came to shock to me because one out of four car accidents in the United States are caused by texting and driving. So 25% of all the accidents we see are because for a split second, someone decided to look down and got into a crash. And all it takes is five seconds for you to get distracted. So that five seconds that we look down to change the Spotify playlist, that could easily end up in an accident. Um, more than 3,000 teens die each year in the U.S. according to auto safety while texting and driving. So we're all around the same age, so imagine 3,000 of us dying each year just for texting and driving. 48% of young drivers have seen their parents text and drive. So a lot of the times we do this because we see someone else do it. So as a kid, we're like, oh, our parents did it really quickly and nothing happened, so that means once I start driving, I can do it too and I can get away with it. It's because we've, we witnessed it and slowly that starts to form a bad habit, which is why most of us started the habit of texting and driving. So, can you and do you want to pay for a ticket? So all of us come to SU, our tuition is $35,000 and last time I checked, somehow we have to pay for that, whether it be out of our pockets, out of student homes and all that. And if we get in an accident, a ticket can cost roughly $100 to $200, which a lot of us that are in here probably don't have jobs and we probably don't have money to pay the $200 and $100 for a simple text message that could have waited the five minutes until our destination. Why you shouldn't be texting and driving? If we're texting and driving, a lot of the times, whether we like to hear this or not, we can be the cause of someone's death. All it takes is for you to hit someone's car, someone's neck, to snap in a different way, and you can kill someone. Last time I checked, that's a commandment, thou shalt not murder. Because you texted, you just killed someone. If you get into an accident, and God forbid that happened, but it's a possibility that it could happen, which is very serious, and a lot of us don't think about it on the daily. When we look at the tech while we're driving, it's like, oh, it'll be just one second, we'll reply. And all it takes is that one second to get into a car. You can go to jail. If you hit someone's car and you, you're found guilty of texting and driving while that person is injured or that person ends up dying, you can go to jail for that because that is considered to be murder. And in the state of Florida, we do not have, um, according to the DMV website, we don't have a law on um, like banning texting and driving, but we do have what's called the second second degree law, which is um, th they can only stop you if um, they see you like breaking another law while texting and driving. So for an example, if you're at a red light and you run the red light while using your phone, the cop can stop you for running the red light while using your phone. But let's say if you're stopped at a red light and you're just using your phone and you're following the law, they can't legally give you a ticket for that. Which is crazy because in some states like in Illinois, if you're caught while texting and driving, they can suspend your license for a whole year. Which is crazy that how different it varies from state to state that, like, how the laws are changing. Um, you're gonna have to pay a lot of money for a ticket, like I said, 100 to $200 for simply just sending one little text message that could be avoided. It takes maybe five minutes to get from here to Walmart. On the way there, I, if someone texts me, I can either wait the three extra minutes till I get there, reply in a second, and put myself in that danger. And not only myself in that danger, but the people around me. 
Because when you're driving, you're not only driving for yourself, but you're also driving for the people around you. Um, your car can get wrecked. Like I said, my I got uh, in a wreck and my car and his car in the end of the wreck cost over $3,000 in damages, all because he was distracted for that five seconds. And you don't have the money to fix it. Believe it or not, Like, who has $3,000 to be able to fix the damage if you were to get in a wreck right here right now? I know I don't. <coughs> So you don't want to be, you don't want the ambulance to be replying to your text when you can reply to the text five minutes later in a safe and total investigation. And it's better left that message unread than to be dead. So some alternatives for texting and driving. You can use a hands-free. A lot of cars have Bluetooth that you can connect before you leave your destination to while your car's in park. You can connect your phone so that you can answer it on the wheel, because I know some cars have that feature. You can use a Bluetooth. I know it's kind of old, but it's an option if you're like that type of person that you have to drive a lot for your work, you have to answer calls, Bluetooth. Um, I did find that um, also on the DMV website that you can use your phone if it's for an emergency reason only. So like while you're driving and you see an accident with them happen like right before your eyes, that's when you're allowed to pull out your phone, but it has to be for an emergency reason only. And you can also ask the passenger next to you to reply. I know that ever since my accident, I when people are in the car with me, I'm not only putting my own life at risk, but I'm putting the people's lives that are in my car at risk. So let's say if she's in the car next to me, I'll ask her, hey, can you just reply to this person really quick? Can you just change the station really quick? Why? So that I don't put my life in danger and the people inside of my car in danger as well. And just don't use your phone if you don't have to. If you know that you just got a simple text message of someone replying, okay, you don't need to reply to that if you know it's not important. It's just you're also taking yourself out of that situation and you're taking people around you out of that situation as well. So in conclusion, um, texting and driving can cause serious damages, result in fees, and take a person's life in a matter of five seconds. And this is why we shouldn't text and drive. <coughs>